Jets at the Bills. Bill side of the ball. Jake, your take. Yeah, uh, I'm benching Gabe Davis this week. Um, he, that's the the main takeaway here. Is the Jets are allowing the second least points to wide receivers as a whole and the second least points to outside wide receivers. They're slightly more favorable to slot wide receivers. So if I'm going to start a wide receiver too in this matchup, it's going to be Isaiah McKenzie. But really, I think it's mostly just going to be the dig show here. And then I'm also monitoring the running back room there. Was the James Cook takeover real? Is that going to be the thing rest of season? I probably don't think it is. But it's just something to monitor in this game, which could be pretty close. Yeah, Jets defense is real, and James Cook needs to be on your roster. If he's on waivers, he needs to be sitting there just in case. So, 100%. with you there. Jets side of the ball. The Mike White hype might slow down here a bit as the Bills defense allows the eighth fewest points to the quarterback position on the year. Love Mike White. Love what he's doing. Love the decisions the Jets are making. Love the way the Jets look with Mike White. But this is just not the week that you want to start Mike White. Um, however, I, I am comfortable trying out Zonovan Knight once again. Uh, even with Michael Carter's return, I think there's still a role in this offense uh, for Zonovan. Um, so basically, I look at it as like a, a combo of Zonovan and Michael Carter. Um, you know, Knight was seeing a lot of the uh, touches around the goal line uh, when he was in there, and I really like to see that. Zonovan Knight is my RB29 on the week, and as such, I think he is a uh, pretty solid option in your flex and he's their best option around the goal line. So Zonovan of a night, even with Michael Carter back, I'm still in. Yeah. I think I saw something that Sala or LaFleur, one of them had said that Knight is like almost alluding to the fact that like Knight's the guy moving forward. And mm -hmm. we know this running back room has always been a committee. Even when Brees was at his absolute best and looking good, Carter still had a role. So Zonovan has looked like I, the best back on that team that isn't named Brees Hall to me. So I, I, cool I have him in a must start, a must win matchup. So I really hope he stays looking good this week. Yep, with you, man. All right, this is question of the competition preview in week fourteen, folks. Week fourteen, JWB. That is Jake. I am Tyler. Two quick things. Do us a favor, folks. Um, if you're not watching this on YouTube, or maybe you are and you haven't subbed, hit that subscribe button. Any subscribers we get is going to give us a huge help on our race to 1,000 subscribers. We're already over halfway there. So please sub. And then the second piece here is uh, we have a Discord. JWB has a Discord. There is a link in the description of the YouTube video. So if you're listening to this somewhere else, the link is in the YouTube video. It's completely free right now to join our Discord. It's a fun place to hang out. Plus, you'll get people like Jake and myself and the other JWB guys to answer any of your fans fantasy questions, dynasty, redraft, sit, start, waivers, whatever questions you might have. Maybe you already know the answer, but you just want to get a second opinion. The, the JWB Discord is the place to go. Jake and I will be there. The other guys will be there. At least come and say what's up. It helps us out. We want to get those numbers up. Plus, it's just I think it's just a, a plus EV move for you in the fantasy playoffs. So please take some time. Sub to the YouTube channel. Come join us on Discord, and let's get talking. With that said, Let's get into the rest. Uh, or pass completion. Here's Lamar on a run. Browns at the Bengals. Bengals take, Jake. Uh, yeah, fire them up. I mean, that's like the main take here. We know this Browns defense is not not great, Bob. Um, but the main or uh, the main thing I want to really focus on here is that this is the part of the season where Tyler Boyd can start to contribute again. Um, I know that Cleveland actually has done a pretty good job of limiting plays to the slot so far this year, but it's Tyler Boyd week. Jamar Chase is Love back. It. The offense is looking good. Tyler Boyd's finding the end zone this week. I'm throwing a unit on an anytime touchdown. Ooh. This is purely a gut call at this point, but I think it's going to happen. Love the call. Always love Tyler Boyd week. Elite first name. Browns. Uh, Got to take the L uh, on starting Watson last week. He looked like absolute dog water. Um, it looked like a QB who hadn't played in 700 days. Imagine that. Um, I'm not going back to that well uh, of Watson this week. So I think he's a fine QB too if you're like in a super flex league. Like sure, mm -hmm. fine. Um, I'm not dropping him in redraft, but I would definitely look for other options. The Bengals have also been a top 12 defense against the quarterback this year. It's just not a matchup that I'm looking to start Watson on. I, I'm 
like I said, I'm not starting him. If he's your quarterback and you're dependent on him, I would look out elsewhere. I think this might be a rare case where I'd be okay with like rostering two quarterbacks mm -hmm. and holding on Watson and see if he gets get together in the next week or two. Probably just one week is all I can give him. But at the end of the day, um, I think yeah, you're, we're benching Watson in this one and, and looking else uh, for some streamers. I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about the streamers later. But Watson, I just don't have it in, in my heart to, to start him. I have him well outside the top 15 this week. Yeah, I agree with you there. That was... It's a call that I, I don't even think I can take credit for, like being lower on Deshaun Watson than most. Like, it just seemed like a no brainer to me. The guy hadn't played football, like you said, in almost 700 days. It was not great. It was not inspiring for anybody who still believes in him the rest of the season. But I agree with you. You do have to hold on to him just because the upside is there. We do know top two quarterback in football is within his range of outcomes. It's possible. Texans at the Cowboys. I got the grocer side here, but you get the Cowboys. Let's go. You do. My main takeaway in this game is Zeke is you just fire him up. He's going to be a running back one again. You Everybody who's a running back scores against this Texans team. That's no surprise here. Um, but the main thing that I'm paying attention to is if, if Michael Gallup retains this red zone role that Dak really seems to like him in, he could be a legitimate league winning wide receiver rest of season. If he's going to continue to get these targets in the end zone if he's going to be the guy that they're throwing fade routes to in the end zone cd's not historically that guy dak tends to like a guy like a Gallup or an amari cooper in that role a little bit more if Gallup retains this rest of season he could be a league winning wide receiver if he is on your team i'm not necessarily hammering him into my lineups this week but he is a guy that i am very comfortable Having on my bench, if he's available on waivers for any reason in your league, pick him up because his upside is so high. He's starting to look like Michael Gallup again, not necessarily a wide receiver who looked two years or less than a year removed from an ACL injury. Yeah, there's always been some hype around Gallup. I mean, everyone liked his talent, liked the situation, and the Cowboys are, are turning it on and getting it together at the right time of the year. Exactly. Um, and Gallup could be playing a key role in that. Uh, we know CD is that guy. They like to run the ball, but there's no reason why it can't be Gallup getting more looks over Dalton Schultz at this point in time. So I'm generally with you. Um, I think Gallup is a little bit undervalued at this moment. Man, the, the Texans, well, well, when we get the return of Davis Mills, uh, this does absolutely nothing for me yeah. either way. I was, dude, I was doing my rankings, just a fun story, and Kyle Allen was my lowest quarterback ranked this week. Like, he's dead last. And I was like, oh, God, Davis Mills is starting. I need to go in there and change him. I redid my projections. Now Davis Mills is the yeah, lowest glad. ranked quarterback yeah. this week. It, it just changed absolutely nothing. Um I was like reading, I think they might be without Brandon Cooks and Nico Collins in this one. So it's yep. like, it doesn't matter. We are just moving on. The only player you can start right now is going to be Damian Pierce. I think there's still not like a chance he's a solid RB2 just based off of volume. And the pit, the path of least resistance against the Cowboys is the run game. Um, you know, I, I don't expect there to be, you know, much of anything again through the air. And just to kind of reiterate that and really hammer that point home, the Cowboys right now have the first DVOA against the pass. That means DVOA, they're the best pass defense in the NFL. And the Texans pass offense is 32nd, dead last. So you have the worst passing offense in the NFL going up against the best, the best passing defense. So like, let's just say, you know, even if Cooks and Nico Collins are around, you're still probably not starting them. They probably can just hammer down on Damian Pierce, put seven in the box, and, and you know, and stop him. But if anyone scores a touchdown in here, I bet the Texans will probably score one. It's probably going to be Damian Pierce. So I, I, I'm okay with Damian Pierce. It's like as long as you're okay with it, you know, the 12 to 16 point outcome just based off volume. But it's just Pierce and we're moving along. Yeah, it's disgusting down there. Hey, on bright side, they basically have the first pick locked up. Yeah. They, they get to do what they want to do, so good good for them. Um, I think you know when you let a quarterback like Watson go, I know the reasons behind it, but objectively, when you let a quarterback like Watson go, you, you better hope you get the first pick to be able to get the next guy in the door. Vikings at the Lions. The 5-7 and seven Lions are actually favored to win against the 10-win Vikings, which is pretty wild, uh, if you ask me. But Lions aren't home, which is pretty much just kind of like a pick em, essentially. But still, um, you got my Lions here, Jake. I'm going to say that Jared got... Goff might be my top QB streaming option this week. Uh, the Vikings are top seven points allowed to quarterbacks. Uh, you can probably expect a big game from the Lions running backs too. But this is an uh, this is a, a Vikings team that is I don't want to call them frauds, right? Because they're not. But their defense is very very bad. They've got five wins against backup quarterbacks or four wins, something like that. Most of their wins are in one possession games, like. They're probably it's it's probably going to be a one possession game again, but I think Jared Goff is going to throw the ball forty to fifty times, probably get three touchdowns, three hundred yards. Like this is just going to be a 
see what happens. Amon Ra's down there somewhere. Chark's down there somewhere. Jamison Williams is down there somewhere. Jamison Williams was in victory formation. They think that Jamison Williams is the key to winning games. Or else he would not have been on the field in victory formation. So I'm just saying. This yep. Lions offense is on its way up, and they're going to smash, and I think they are going to win this week against the Vikings. I love it. I absolutely love it. I mean, I would argue that the Lions offense has been operating at a pretty elite level um, all year long. Um, just the defense has been holding them back. Kind of improving a little bit, but I'll get to that. Vikings, you know, I would be remiss to not point out how much the Vikings defense has improved over the last four or five weeks. The defense is still targetable, but isn't this print fest that it used to be. Uh, the game carry is a 52 and a half implied total, so we are smashing all Vikings on this one still. Um, not much to really say here. Um, you know, you start up your Vikings. You Kirk, J. Jeff, Cook, Hawk, and even Thielen, I'm comfortable in this one. I think he's like my, my wide receiver 29 or 30. Um, you know, I, the one thing I guess I would point out here, like to have some type of take, is this this is Co this is Hawk's uh, return to his former home revenge game here. So you're starting Hawk anyways, but it's really just fire him up. This should be a very fertile ground for fantasy points, as majority Lions games have been this season. Yeah, we're look. This game has the highest implied total in football this week. Like this is going to be, but based on how 2022 has actually been, we should probably say this is going to be like a seven to ten game. Both defenses are going <laughs> to randomly come out of nowhere, four picks aside. But really, this is the highest projected outcome for the game. Vegas is very good at doing what they do, and as a result, it's going to be a lot of fantasy points on both sides. Eagles at the Giants. Giants. I think Richie James is a sneaky, solid flex play this week. Um, Philly has been a very good defense this year, especially against the pass. But where they are beatable is in the slot. They're allowing the six most points per game to slot where I have receivers in football this year. Richie James, when healthy, plays nearly 72% of his snaps from the slot. He is there almost exclusively. There is no other pass catchers of note here, really. Isaiah Hodgins. Little resurgence there, had a nice little touchdown last week, one called back the week before. He's going to have a role, but against these outside corners, Isaiah Hodgins and Darius Slayton probably aren't going to hold their own too much against James Radbury and Darius Slay. So I like Richie James here as a pretty sneaky flex play if you are in PPR formats. I love that call. Absolutely. I feel like Richie James has been kind of sneaky most of this, you know, not most season, but ever since Wandell went down. Um, we talked about it last week, I think, about how the slot always thrives with the Giants. I mean, Sterling Shepard to Wandell to, to now Richie James. So I'm, I'm here for this call. Um, Eagles, I mean, not to be lazy, but this is just another case of fire them up. Yep. Um, the Giants defense ranks 27th DVOA versus the run, 28th DVOA against the pass. I mean, it's bottom six in both categories, run versus pass. The Eagles should absolutely eat in this one. Um, you start the usual, usual suspects. Goddard is still on IR, so avoid those tight ends. But um, I guess if I had to come up with like some type of take here, is the Giants actually, um, they, they run a lot of man coverage defense. Um, and A.J. Brown absolutely eats man coverage for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, so A.J. Brown is in a spot to absolutely destroy and demolish once again. Um, I think A.J. Brown last week, obviously, if you started him, you, you ate. He had his revenge game. I think he could do something similar again this week against the Giants. Um, so I love A.J. Brown in this one. Other than that, you know, you start Hurts, you start Sanders. I think this could be a good Sanders game, too. The Eagles are favored by quite a bit. And then DVS, always a solid start as well. So nothing too crazy here. You start your guys on the Eagles. You feel confident about it. But my, my I guess, like, the hot take here would be A.J. Brown, um, let's say over 100 yards, two touchdowns. I Again. love it. I Again. love it. I love it. Ravens and Steelers. Steelers. I hate this. Like, the, everything in my soul says Kenny Pickens, Deontay Johnson. Great matchup here. Really, you know, Ravens allowing, I think, the six month points to wide receivers on the year. If you look at some of the peripherals behind that, though, it's a little bit weird how those points come about. And they're actually not. They're actually like a semi solid pass defense, even though some metrics suggest they're not. But Kenny Pickett is so bad at the game of football, in my opinion, that I don't think you can start a single Steelers wide receiver here. So Najee remains like the only startable wide or only startable offensive player in my mind. You could maybe get a pat into your lineup but i think there's some better streaming options this week that i'll talk about a little bit later i know we all thought that big ben was as bad as it could get but it turns out old with a old with a bad arm but knows how to play football is better than relatively old with a bad arm and doesn't really know how to play football so i gotta agree with you man <laughs> it's it's gross like it, it, i didn't think it could get grosser and i was wrong yeah i was, I was right about kenny pickett 
but I was wrong that Kenny Pickett couldn't be better than the corpse of Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah, it's pretty bad, man. He's ruined Deontay Johnson, um, which, I mean, he still gets the same volume. And I, I just don't understand how it happens, but it's it's the truth, man. I mean, and I love Pickens, too. Like, Pickens is his dog, and it's like he's not even throwing the ball his way. Yeah. Like, Pickens just... is rightfully – when multiple wide receivers on your offense get frustrated at the quarterback not throwing them the football, that says more about the quarterback than it does about those wide receivers. Yeah, I would agree with you on that one. Ravens, uh, Tyler Huntley is a preferred streamer this week. I actually, um, when you mentioned Jared Goff, I had to go into my rank because I actually have Jared Goff at 11 and Huntley at 13. I think they're both great options this yeah, week. Yeah, I mean, very much. I mean, you know, if you're, I would rather start Goff and Huntley over Trevor Lawrence, Daniel Jones, Deshaun Watson, Tom Brady, Mike White, Tannehill. Like, there's a lot of guys I'd rather start these guys over. So just like Goff, um, Huntley is going to be a preferred streamer of the week, my QB 13. So it's it's basically just start Tyler Huntley. I like him. Um, I think the one the running back situation is gross. It's a three man committee. I don't really know exactly what's going on with J.K. Dobbins. He looks like he's going to be coming off IR soon. I think the one thing that I will say is I'm okay with holding Gus Edwards or Kenyon Drake though, um, because the Ravens' RB schedule is pretty much cake here in the next couple weeks. I mean they get the Browns and the Falcons. These are dream running back matchups. So um, while I, I'm not just sitting here saying you need to start Gus or Kenyon Drake, if if something happens around these one of these running backs. One of these guys go down, um, you know, Dobbins doesn't come off IR soon enough. Like, I think it's tough to start right now, but it's a week-to-week game. A lot of yeah. things can change. Um, the the running schedule for the Ravens is very good moving forward, so I like holding on to Gus or Kenyon Drake. Yeah, there's a path to production there. There's no denying that. And it, we saw Dobbins come back from injury once this year, not be 100%, get re-hurt. It wouldn't shock me if it happened again, unfortunately. Jags at the Titans. Titans, your take. Yeah, so the main take here, you know, obviously we're monitoring Traylon Burks, but with the way that the concussion protocol has changed in season, it's been very hard for players to get cleared the week after their concussion. Um, So just something to keep in mind there. For me, if Burks remains out, Chig becomes a like one of my primary streaming tight ends here. You saw a huge route increase after the Burks concussion. The tight ends are allowing the 12th most points to tight ends. And he's really going to be the most athletic person on the field. Like not to knock Nick Akine Westbrook, not to knock him, not to knock the corpse of Robert Woods. Although saying that the way I did knocked him a little bit there, but this is a, this is a gross passing attack in the first place. Chig has the potential to see some volume there. And if I'm desperate for a streaming tight end there, he's on your waivers. I can guarantee it. Nobody is rostering Chig in your redraft leagues right now. There's an option there. There's a path to production. And if I need a tight end this week, that's where I'm looking right now. Yeah. We um, got some, some, some Chig propaganda from Jake. Uh, what's new here? Um, I'm here for it, though. I'm here for it. I mean, I, I like for example, I have Chig above Hooper, Mike Gusecki, Conklin. Um, and those are some names that I would start him over. I think he's a fine streamer. I, I think you could do worse than Chig this week, considering the how bad the position is. Why yeah. not? I would I would comfortably stream Chig over any wide receiver on that passing attack, even even knowing that that Nick uh, Akine Westbrook has scored 30 points in a game this year. Yeah, exactly. I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, uh, Jack side of the ball, you know, the, t- the Titans continue to be a pretty damn elite run defense. Um, the Titans are actually the, the league's largest pass funnel to date. Um, no team defense, talking about the Titans here, uh, sees a higher pass ratio to lower run ratio. Just people don't run against the Titans and they pass against them because it's really hard to run against the Titans yeah. and it's really easy to pass against the Titans. You know, this sets up well for the Jags pass catchers. Um, luckily for Etienne, um, teams have also found success passing to the running backs against the Titans as well. You know, this game carries a pretty gross 41 point implied total, but I'm still comfortable firing up Christian Kirk. Kirk, Zay Jones, and Etienne in this one. Um, as usual, you could do worse than Ingram in a pinch. Nothing too crazy here. I just think the low total might get you off of it, but the pass catchers have a pretty decent matchup, so I'll be holding strong with them. Yep, I agree with you there. Chiefs at the Broncos. Sorry, Jake. The Broncos. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm just going to go back to a solid tight end streaming option here. Greg Dulcich, they, Nathaniel Hackett came out and said, we're basically using him as a wide receiver at this point. You're looking at no Cortland Sutton. No offense to Kendall Hinton. No offense to 
insert rookie who may take a, some snaps in this game here. But Dulcich and Judy are really the only two pass catchers of note here. And if Dulcich is going to be used in the wide receiver role, if I can get some wide receiver-esque production out of the tight end, we saw after Sutton left the game last week that he was one of uh, Russell Wilson's preferred targets there. It's not the greatest matchup in the world by any means, but I'll take the volume where I can get it. So Dulcich remains probably my preferred streaming option at tight end this week, definitely over Chig. Um, but if, if Dulcich isn't, you know, isn't operating as a traditional tight end. He's not blocking as much. He's going to be the guy who offers the best path to production. You're muted. Huge thank you there. I was just trying to make sure. I have like some dude cutting wood back here in Perfect. my background here. So what sorry about that. I'm the mute. Anyways, let's get back into it. Uh, Chiefs. While the Broncos' offense um, is putrid, we do know this, the Broncos' defense still remains strong, um, in particular the past defense of the Broncos. This isn't enough to truly be worried about Mahomes or Kelsey. They're still at the top. But the rest of the pass catchers are already in question, so it's a concern here. I'd probably still fire up Juju um, as like he, he's going to be a fine start. Um, he, but the rest is just such a gross committee that I can't commit to anything. I've, I've been on record trying to stash Sky more. I think I have to give that up, Jake. I, I just don't see the breakout happening in these last couple weeks here. I, I like him moving forward a yeah. bit, but I'm, I'm not enough to like go buy him in Dynasty or hold him in redraft. So that is over. Um, the 44-point implied total here isn't bad, but the Chiefs are actually nine and a half road favorites going into this one. So I think just on that alone in that environment that Vegas thinks is about to happen, Pacheco seems like the move here. Um, he, you know, this is the like the path of least resistance against the Broncos is on the run. This is pretty easy situation where the Chiefs find themselves up. The odds are good. This is a game where Pacheco could see eighteen to twenty touches. So uh, Pacheco continues to be a strong start. My RB nineteen on the week. Yeah, I like it. You can't. It's this Broncos defense is scary good. Like, and I don't even think they've been trying that hard. If we're being honest, it's tough to try hard when your offense puts up nine points a game or 10 points a game or whatever they're doing. I mean, I totally get it. Um, eight touchdowns for us on the air. Um, There's like three teams that their last six weeks of football have outproduced the, the offense, the Broncos offense. entire season. So it's pathetic, man. Anyways, we won't pour salt in the wounds of any more Broncos fans. We seem to do that every show. We can't help ourselves. Sorry, Nate. <laughs> Sorry, Nate. Panthers at Seahawks. Seahawks. Yeah. Um, so running back questions, Jake. There's running back questions here. Yeah, there's there's running back questions here. Major running back room injuries here. Kenneth Walker alluding to maybe playing, but it sounds like he's got a jammed ankle, which even all of the the doc the fantasy doctors that I follow are like that could be like four different things. We really don't know exactly what it means. DJ Dallas, who's maybe the second most talented running back in that room, also dealing with a high ankle ligament issue, which sounds a lot like a high ankle sprain, but also apparently isn't, according to Pete Carroll. Travis Homer, not great uh, as a runner. Pretty solid pass catcher, all things considered. But he's also dealing with a knee sprain. Tony Jones stinks. Like the man's it's fun, but the man is not an efficient running back in any way, shape or form with you, even though the matchups all say play a running back here. If I was going to pick one, it's probably Travis Homer just because there is some pass catching upside there. The wide receivers are going to be fine. You're, you're playing them. The tight ends. If you're desperate, you can flex Noah Fant, but I've named two guys I would prefer to stream this week over Noah Fant. So if I'm going to make a running back call here, it's Travis Homer. Um, but if Wayne Gallman, we've seen him wiggle his way into a semi-productive role in the past too. It wouldn't shock me at all. So I think you need to pick up Wayne Gallman just in case these are some somewhat serious injuries to Kenneth Walker and DJ Dallas. It's just, if, if you're like trying to win the playoffs and you're going to depend on a Seahawk running back, I would suggest not doing that. Yeah, That's it's kind of it's, where I'm at. it's pretty tough. And I have one league where I'm doing this, so RIP <laughs> Good to me. Good luck. Panthers, um, I got Foreman and DJ Moore as top 24 options, respectively, in this one. Uh, Foreman, just due to his workload in the soft Seahawks run defense, and DJ Moore due to his chemistry with Sam Darnold, which is just, I mean, we're just, I mean, I feel like DJ Moore, if you support DJ Moore, if you like DJ Moore, if you don't like DJ Moore, you're just looking for any reason to trot this guy out, because we know he's a talented uh, wide receiver, right. but he looked good with Darnold. I'm willing to give him a shot. I mean, there's no way to like really speak confidently about starting G DJ Moore at this point in time, but um, I think it really just comes down to like a personal thing where I'm willing to you know ride DJ Moore out than have him sit on my bench and things look good enough last week. So um, this is if you're looking for solidarity, I've said this probably four times this, this entire season. If you're looking for solidarity and starting DJ Moore, you're finding it here with Tyler on the JWB show.
and Jake. You're fine and it Jake. with me too. <laughs> Your solidarity's here. Your solidarity's here. Uh, Bucks at the Niners. Brock Purdy. Let's go, Jake. Let's hear it. Uh, even with Brock Purdy at quarterback here, I'm pretty comfortable starting most of your, your options here. The matchup shows this is going to be a Kittle smash week. So absolutely. He's, he's one of the guys that's in your lineup here. Brock Purdy, the, the offense was functioning. Like we've seen it function in the past, quick throws, get the ball out of the quarterback's hand, get it to Debo, get it to the, get it to CMC, you know, get, get the offense working there. But even Brock Purdy acknowledged that he did not throw the ball enough to Brandon Ayuk. So even against a ma- even in a matchup that looks like it may be a little bit tougher here, I'm fine putting Ayuk in my lineup as a flex play here. I think if Purdy's going to make note of it, they're going to bring it up in interviews. He is going to look his way at least a little bit more frequently. But also we're at the point of the year where if Brandon Ayuk has been on your roster at this point in the season, he's probably one of your top three or four wide receivers. So you're just going to fire him up in the flex because I'm firing him up over a Robert Woods off of waivers. Uh, like, I don't even know who else would be on waivers that would even be considered to be able to be started. So if you're between like him and a mid to late running back two, I'm probably firing up by you. Cause I think the ceiling is there. We know what he can do with the ball in his hands and you can beat this Buccaneers defense. Bucks. Um, I mean, the Bucks are in a rough spot, but then you play the Niners who, in my opinion, are the premier defense in the NFL. Um, I think the Niners have the best defense in the NFL. I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah. I say that confidently. Um, you can pretty much bet on every skill player coming in below average to disappointing when playing the 49ers. Like, that's basically what you got to expect. I think wide receiver is a slight exception to that, but definitely quarterback, running back, and tight end. Um, I'd bench Brady in this one. I mean, Brady's been a tough start all year, so I'm not really sure why I'd be starting him anyways. Like, maybe you saw the end of last week. You're like, ah, oh, Brady's back. Like, I'm still starting to golf or hunt yeah. me over Brady um, in this scenario. Um, I think you start Evans and Godwin because you have to. Like, I don't love Evans and Godwin this week, and you kind of just hope that they get you double-digit points. Mm-hmm. Probably also starting Fournette and White. Like, you don't love that neither one of them is going to be elite, but they're both getting, you know, the way that the Bucks utilize their running backs in this offense, they're both getting a ton of high-value targets. You know, I think there's a world where, you, you know, Fournette, White, Evans, and Godwin can all walk away with 10 to 14 points in this. Um, yeah. Doesn't sink you, doesn't kill you. If you're, I, you can't like bench those players because they're probably a core piece of your team at this point. But um, I'm still starting those four guys quite comfortably. But you just gotta temper those expectations and and realize if any of those four guys does get you 12 points, that that's a good outcome in this. Yeah, it's they just lose their their positional one ceilings and end up looking at like all solid flex plays. Yeah, it's a good way to put it. Dolphins at Chargers. Chargers. I'm going to stick on the tight end train that I'm apparently on this week and call Gerald Everett a must-start tight end. The Dolphins are allowing the third most points to tight end so far this year. Mike Williams, probably not going to play again from what I'm seeing. I don't know. We don't have Thursday injury reports yet, but I don't believe he practiced yesterday. It seems to be a high ankle or something with him, which is going to sap all of his upside there. I like Josh Palmer. He's he's fine. I like DeAndre Carter in, in yeah as an upside swing at times, but really the path to beat the dolphins this week for the Chargers is going to be getting the ball into Gerald Everett's hands, obviously Keenan Allen as well, but he's looking a little dusty. Um, but, but Gerald Everett has looked good for most of the season. He's, he's kind of the, the main guy in this matchup for me. Obviously Eckler is going to be a smash here, but I, I, I very much like Everett in this matchup. Dolphin side of the ball. The Chargers defense has not been good. Um, usually the Chargers are, are kind of more of a run funnel, um, in the past years, but because you can also now pass pretty easily on the Chargers defense, you don't have to run the ball. Yeah. So I'm ex- I'm just expecting the Dolphins to eat here, um, wherever they so choose. If they want to do it through the air, if they want to do it on the ground, they can do what they want. A 51 and a half point implied total, 27.5 points coming in for the Finns. Basically, Vegas is saying they expect four Dolphins TDs here. So you start the usual suspects with extreme confidence. The questions really come down to the running backs here. Um, last week we saw Jeff Wilson do pretty much nothing. Same with Moster, but Moster got majority of the work. But you got to keep in mind they only ran the ball eight times last week because they were behind most of the week also played the 49ers again to talk about that but um there's not a lot i can glean from that running back uses last week when you only run the ball eight times I, it's too small of us i know we work in small sample sizes here jake but that's too small yeah. of a sample size for me to take anything from um i have mostert as my rb 21 and um wilson is my rb 22 this week which means it's a soft matchup against the chargers i like them both i don't know how it's going to break down maybe it's kind of a coward cop out here but i think they're both rb twos because considering yeah. the matchup i just really don't know um exactly how it's going to split but i both i do know that i say both are usable 
Yeah, we, we've seen this running back room split into two usable options plenty of different times so far this year. Uh, I'm fine firing up either of them. Let's close things out here. Monday Night Football, Pats at the Cardinals. Cardinals, let's go. Yeah, I mean, there's really not much to say here. I mean, you're just confidently, you're firing up Hollywood. There were talks of a snap count, you know, at first with him. He jumped right into like a 98% route participation, 98% of the snaps. D hops a guy. You know, Trey McBride is basically nothing. Uh, we hoped he would have a role. He is on the field. That's basically what we can say about his role right now. Uh, Rondell didn't practice again, so he's looking to miss the game. But Greg Dortch may be active. So maybe if you're looking for a super sneaky play, you throw a, a Greg Dortch flex out there in a super, super desperate situation. He's been able to find the end zone at times. He's operated semi well in Rondell's role at times early this year, especially. You know, we saw him as a pretty solid, like 10 to 15 point a week flex guy. You know, you could do a lot worse than Dorch and your flex this week. Maybe that's the the hottest call I can make on this game, but I'm also just lowering expectations a little bit on James Conner. Uh, they do a pretty good job of limiting running back output, so maybe Conner sees a little bit of a downfall here, but he's still a solid running back too for me. Pat's out of the ball. Cardinals' defense really doesn't strike any fear into the heart of any anyone any, anywhere. Um Cardinals have been extremely bad against tight ends this year, so I think Hunter Henry is a great streamer here. Um, just to give you a little more context around where we're at with things, I got, um, I mean, Everett's two spots ahead of Henry, but I have Henry at tight end 10 right now. He's a little, he's ahead uh, of Chig, uh, ahead of Ingram. Um, so I like Hunter Henry a lot. I think it has to do with just basically the matchup is is very good. Other than that, you know, you start usual suspects, Ramondre Stevenson's smash play, and then Jacoby, if he's healthy, I'm still starting in PPR leagues. But um, I guess the take here is uh, we're doing a lot of tight end streaming. A tight end's a tough spot for a lot of people. Hunter Henry is a preferred streamer for me over the guys we've talked about. We've had weeks this year where like six dudes broke double-digit points at the tight end position and half PPR. I think we see a little bit more than that this week. I hope so. I hope so. All right, that's going to do it. Week 14, crushing the competition, JWB. Final thoughts, Jake. Yeah, it's going to be a good week. A lot of games that I really like here. A lot of upside, good fantasy matchups. I'm ready for playoffs, though, baby. It's money-making season. That's right, baby. Um, my final thoughts here, I'll give some. If you're holding uh, well, you know, a wide receiver five or six, drop them for running back handcuffs at this point in time. You're not going to use them. I know it's been great trying to like hold on to like Sky Moore. Um, you know, even like Traylon Burks or Pickens, I like them, but it's like at this point in time, I'm not sure they're going to help you much down the stretch. Yeah. And, you know, if like, you know, if, if you need to start them, you need to start them. But if you have strong wide receivers, like you don't need to bench two to three wide receivers on the bench. Like you need maybe one, possibly two wide receivers. The rest, I would just stack up with running back options. We're talking yeah. the Josh Kelly's, the, the Hilliards, the Keontae Ingram's, um, give me a couple more. If you got him, you know, Benjamin, and yes. Yeah. Um, you can even look at like a. Uh, Khalil Herbert, if he's available on waivers for yep. any reason in your league. These, yep. These are the players you want on your bench. Um, we, we know year after year that league winning comes from running backs for the most part, especially this late down the stretch. So, folks, try to fill your bench up with running backs. Deion Jackson, another one just popped yep. into my mind. Um, that said, Jake, let's close things out. Plug your Twitter and your work. You can find me at Perry underscore FF for all of my personal uh, tweets, fantasy content, as well as my personal podcast at two AVG husbands on Twitter uh, and two average husbands spelled out on all platforms. And then like Tyler said earlier in the episode, make sure you hop in the discord with us. We talk gambling. We talk fantasy football. We talk a little bit of everything. We talk real football. We talk about life sometimes. Just have to have those important conversations. If you want to join the discord, check out the link in the description. You'll be able to talk to all of the members of the JWB family fantasy football team and you can find me on twitter at ff tyler that's all we have today folks don't forget tell somebody you love them later